my uh, laptop today because I, uh, I was studying and uh, oh, I'm not connected, so I don't I don't need all of that information. Anyway, um, I brought my laptop today because I was doing some studying in Eastward, and I found that what I wanted to do tonight would be a little easier than than in my sword. So I'm. Um, Besides, my tablet is at the point that it's so loaded up, I can't, I can't even thin stuff out in it to make it work anymore. And my son-in-law, Brian, said to me, Dad, that's old stuff. So I guess, I guess I'm going to have to break down and buy some new stuff. So anyway, but I, but I wanted to say this. I, I've... Um, been praying a lot, saying, Lord, what, what do you really, where do you really want to go? Where, what do you really want to do? What, you, what do you really want to say? And I had a phone call, believe it or not, from Eddie Lemlin this week, and, uh, and he made a statement to me. He said, you know, there's nothing out there. And I thought, uh, I don't know what he's been looking for. You know, I have no idea. But this is what he said to me. He said, we got all the foundations. But he said, it seems like we've just been going in circles. And he said, we keep going in circles. We keep going in circles. And he said, it's, it's strange. But he said, it just doesn't seem like we're moving forward. And I was amazed when they began to sing this song tonight about don't give up, let's move forward. And I think some of the things uh, we got to understand, um, had the opportunity this, was it last night or the night before? We listened to Darren Bagley. Um, some of us had met him years ago when he was at, at um, Brother Weimer's church, and uh, he had, a, he had a, a real sharp word for us to begin to realize that we got to consider when we're looking at the Word of God, we need to, we need to listen to who he was talking to. Because what is said to in the Gospels, and he said something that I've been saying for years, but we struggle with because most people just because the Gospels are in the New Testament, they really aren't New Testament. Are you all listening? Jesus came in the Gospels. Jesus came in the Gospels, and basically, he was an Old Testament man. He had to fulfill an Old Testament mindset. He had to fill up the law. Every jot and tittle of the law he had to fill up. Because once Calvary came, there was a whole new economy. There's absolutely a new culture, a new economy, absolutely everything was new. And we have to begin to realize that what's in the new economy, there's no such thing as special people except God's people. You all right? If this church hasn't gotten over the fact that the Jews are not God's chosen people any more than you are. Are you all right? You got to read the you got to read the prophets. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. And the prophets all their all their pictures were all in in Jews. So anyway, when he was saying all that it was to come, I, it's kind of a forward into what I want to say about First John. How many know who John is? There were 12 disciples, right? 
one of them hung himself. Okay, so there was 11 left. Okay, 10 of them died by martyrdom. They tried to martyr the 11th one, John. And the tradition says they put him in a pot of boiling oil and he just climbed out. Are you listening? And so John came to this point. He was the one that was called the beloved of the Lord, or the one who laid his head on his breast. Okay. Uh, if you read the last chapter of the Gospel of John, you'll find out that the word went about. At that time, he wasn't going to die. And John said, that isn't what he said. So, anyway, I want to approach the epistles of John, especially the first epistle of John. And uh, I'm going to give you just a little historical background about it, okay? Nowhere in the letter itself, nowhere in the basic center of the letter does it name that John wrote it. And it also doesn't tell you who he wrote it to. Okay? So one of the things you can accept is the fact that if it was not directed to a certain church, to a certain people, to the Jews, or to anybody, it's all for everybody that were believers. Are you all right? Okay. The other fact of the matter is that historically, from the early days, it was always credited that this letter, the, at least this first one, I'm not gone into the other two, but this letter was a letter that John wrote. Nobody ever questioned it. And never did any of the historians ever suggest that somebody else wrote it. No other name was ever presented. Okay? And uh, another thing is, we have to begin to realize when it was written. Historically, how many of us know that our calendar doesn't agree with biblical? Yeah. So we can't, we can't go that because Jesus was born somewhere between 4 and 6 B.C. According to our calendar. Somewhere between 4 and 6. Okay? And so... Uh, when you begin to take a look at what they have, anybody that has done um, time and, and calculated by time uh, things, they always give you maybe a four-year window in there between whatever it is. So 1 John was written somewhere between 90 and 94 A.D. Okay? So it was written somewhere at the time towards the end of John's history. Because when you look at the same history for the book of Revelation, it was written approximately in that same period. So you have to begin to realize that the, this epistle of John was written to believers and it was written sometime before John's uh, exodus to Patmos. Okay? Are you, are you listening? And I don't even want to get into that because Patmos means the end of my life or the end of my being. So, he, you know, he was, he was sent there for a purpose. So anyway, in, in the Gospel of John, or the Epistle of John, I, I'm going to keep saying Gospel. You're going to have to forgive me. I, I want to say Epistle and I want to, I, I, I want to do something I'm afraid I want to preach and I don't want to preach to begin with. Okay, I want to get some facts across to us. Okay, um, this book, this book, okay, um, I can't read my writing, so I better get my glasses, okay. I put my glasses on, I can't see you, so, and I don't like looking like this. Anyway. Well, I broke that pair already. Anyway, uh, the context of the letter is broken up into five parts, okay? The first part of the 
letter is broken up, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and it is the um, introduction. It talks about the apostolic positioning of the writer, okay, and what his fulfillment was. Uh, uh, the second part is chapter 1, verses 5 to 229. And it means, it talks about light. God is light, him is no dark. We know, we know, we'll get into it when we get there. And, it talk, and it's basically called, learn to walk in the light. Uh, chapter 3, or the third part, is chapter 3, verse 1 to 421. And it teaches us how to abide in his love. And chapter 5, or the fourth part is chapter 5, 1 to 12. And it means faith and certainty. And chapter 5, or the fifth part is chapter 5, 13 to 21. And it means the conclusion. Now I'm going to do this. I don't know how long I'm going to take because... Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I, I don't want to do that. I want to read the first four verses. Is that all right? How many got their Bibles? Um, I'm going to read out of the King James. Not for any specific purpose. I, I've been doing my reading, my daily reading, I've been doing in, in the Webster's. But uh, I, I want to read out of the King James, if that's all right with you. You know, the Bible that Jesus carried. You, you, know, you all know. Anyway, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, has been manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus the Christ. 1 John chapter 1, verse 4. And these things... Write we unto you that your joy may be full. What is the purpose? That your joy may be full. That every moment you breathe, your joy will be full just over knowing who he is. Doesn't that change church folks a bit? Okay? So I want to start in the first verse, okay? And one of the things I noticed right off the bat when I began to read this and take a look at this, I find that what the writer John does, he throws us right in the deep end of the pool. He doesn't start with the fact of we just see the Jesus that walked on the shores of Galilee. We saw that. But he begins to talk to us about what we really saw, what we really heard, what it really was. He calls it the word of life. He did not call it the Bible. He did not call it a man. He called it the word of life. Say the word of life was with God before time was. Don't just say that. Get it. You're not just looking at the Jesus who walked on the shores of Galilee. You're looking at the Son of God who was one with the Father. Are you listening? who was one with the Father, who was there. I'm going to read you some scripture, okay? Maybe this will help you to understand why I call this the deep end of the pool. Because 
We got in a conversation the other night with the kids, with Chris and Amy and the kids, and we began to talk about, and I said, what's the Holy Ghost for? He's here to make us like Jesus. But if I ask you, in 90% of Christendom, the Jesus they want to be like is like the one that wore a robe and sandals and walked on the shores of Galilee. Are you listening to me? I want to talk to you. I want to, I want to get down to you because there's more to it than that. The one that walked there was, was the same one that went up on the Mount of Transfiguration and he totally changed. Are you listening? Then I want to also say this to you. This is what I said to them. I said, that same Jesus... He died and came again. All we've ever seen people do around us is die. Have you seen anybody raised? And I want to give you a little clue. Everybody that's been raised, I've met a couple of people that raised people from the dead, but you know what? They died later. They didn't get eternal life. They didn't get into immortality. I'll never forget when Bernadette's mama, when we were in the other church, I walked back there and she went out and that she had no pulse. And as a scared young guy, I thought, oh my God, I'm preaching life and I got to call the ambulance. But when she went <laughs> like that after we prayed, Are you listening? But you know what? She's still not with us. And that isn't what he said. We go down to the next verse. He talks about eternal life. But I want to deal with this first verse, okay? I want to deal with this verse. John, oh, I hate this. You know, I'm, I am, uh, I live with a touchscreen computer, and then I bring this thing in, and I got to work with a keyboard, and I want to jab the screen and then, why don't you work? <laughs> but I want to read you this about that which was from the beginning. First John, in the next chapter. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, where was he? From the beginning. But this is the one I really wanted. Listen to this. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Think about that. Just stop. Just stop. Because all we do is we see stuff, we respond, our senses respond to all that stuff. But inside of us is the Holy Ghost, and he don't respond to that stuff. What he responds to is a father that's in a realm that's unseen. What's only real to us is what we see. What's only real to us is what we hear. What's only real to us is what we smell or taste, touch. But what's real to God is the fact that he's real. He can't be seen. And what John is trying to say to us, he came out of that realm, took on the shape of a man, and there it is. There's the word of God manifest in flesh. But that wasn't all there was to him. Because when he died and resurrected, not everybody got to see him. I think there's 11 appearances. And for 40 days. And in those 40 days, he did no miracle. He taught them about the kingdom. He told them what the kingdom was all about. Before that, he had said, listen, if I cast out devils, the kingdom of God's right in your, your midst. He was introducing a new dimension. He was introduce, introducing a new reality. But think about this. Think about this. 
I got, I got. How can I explain it, Lord? But just think about this. Before anything was, you want to be like Jesus, right? Nobody in here don't want to be like Jesus. My question to them kids were this, which one? The one who walked on the shores of Galilee? The one that was in the resurrection? Or the one that prayed this? Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with thee before the world was. The word for world there is aeon, time before ages, before anything. And when John talks about the word of life here, guess what that word does out of that dimension? When it speaks, it creates. And what does it create? It creates no dying thing, no death thing. It creates absolutely nothing but living things. It is the living word. It is spoken, and that's what the Holy Ghost is trying to put in every one of our mouths. He wants to take out the complaint. He wants to take out the negativity. He wants to take all it. He's thrown us in the deep end of the pool, beloved, to get us to realize that we speak the word of life because that's what the Holy Ghost is. And John said, it came and we touched it. We felt it. We saw it. It was manifested. We got to quit thinking down here, beloved. We got to start looking into a deeper dimension and begin to see where he is. There's nothing limited with God. Not a thing limited with God. You can't stop God from doing anything he wants to do. But he subjects himself to you and me. I've got to be careful. I, I, I'll be preaching all the time. But I'm trying to get us into the deep end of the pool. And we just started. We don't even know how to swim. And we're in 10 foot of water. Because he's taken us into a realm that you and I, I've lived almost 80 years and I can't think that I've ever functioned in that dimension that's so far beyond my natural senses, my natural, oh sure, I've had, I've heard, I've heard heaven speak out of it and I've had some prophetic word and I talk in tongues and all that, but all of that stuff is here in this dimension. There is another dimension that's deeper in God. And that's where God wants to take us. Because we have no idea. God's got a plan. This is what I said to him. I said, everybody wants to die and go to heaven. Then what? Oh, yeah, this is the story you'll get from Christians. Oh, I'll see my mama and my daddy. I'll do this and I'll do that. And he already told the Sadducees, them Sadducees, them sad guys, you know, he already told them, you know, he already told them that it wouldn't be like that. Remember the young, the, the woman had been married to seven brothers? Okay. He said, you have no idea what it's like in that dimension. There's, a, there's another dimension. You don't know. It's only supposition. It's only traditions of men that have made the word of God of no effect. There's more to it than that. I chuckled, I was, I, I don't know what was, oh, I know. We, Sister Fran likes Dr. Oz, you know, and I don't mind him. I can put up with him, because I'm eating. And, um, and, and he, had this, he had this woman on there who was a psychic. I have troubles because sometimes I think a lot of so-called prophetic is psychic. But that's okay. That's just me. Because they get to read what's inside of people. And, and this, this psychic was 
telling this individual all about their dead daddy and what he was doing and all of this stuff and he and da 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 you know and it was going on and on and I'm thinking yeah if a psychic can find it it ain't God there's more to it than that beloved let me finish reading or you know if I if I don't finish reading we we'll, we'll never get done here okay this is proverbs 8 the lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old i was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was when there was no depths i was brought forth and when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled and before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, and when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. He gave to the sea its degree, that the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth. What part of the earth is not habitable? Are you listening? Rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Why was the sons delight with the sons of men? Could it be they were his brothers? Talking about a deeper dimension, beloved. My delight was with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep. The word keep there is guard, protect. Put a military guard around my ways. What does God want? He wants you to find the ways of God in your life. Most people are trying to find a God out there. Why don't they find out what the God in here that's already seated in his heavenly place? Say, God, come on. Highest purpose is me. Mm. Doesn't that tear up theology? man-made theology. Where did God come to live? Where did God come to manifest himself? In you. And me. But we're never going to reach that dimension, beloved, if we do not understand who the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us really is. He isn't just there to make us talk in tongues, prophesy, Heal the sick, raise the dead. Because when the fullness of God begins to work in its fullness in you, there is no negativity. That is why I've always said, I believe that the real translation of James 4, is it 4, 7? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. When you submit yourself to God, they ain't no devil. God never had an enemy. And the Bible tells us that Satan is our enemy, not God's. We got an opponent, beloved, 
but he's defeated. He's not dead, but he's defeated. So if you submit yourself to God, possess him in all his ways. That's what it says in Proverbs. That we keep his ways. We go in his ways. We walk in his ways. Here I go. I'm back trying to punch the screen again. Let me read that first verse again. That which from the beginning, which we have heard. How did we hear it? It was a word. It was a voice. It was spoken. We saw it with our eyes. It showed up. It walked with us. Which we looked upon and our hands handled. John handled him. He laid his head right in his breast. But he called him the word of life. It wasn't a word of religion. He was a word of life. What is... Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. This life, this eternal life, he said in another place, he said, eternal life is knowing the Father or having such a close... It's epigenosco. It's having such a close relationship with the Father that the God's life begins to work and become your life. That's what happened to Enoch. That's why I've been saying for a number of years, when God revealed it to me, an Enoch kind of walk is the kind of walk we all should want. He met the God that didn't write a Bible yet. He met the God, he met the God that didn't create no churches yet. Are you listening? Made no rules or regulations. He just walked with that God. He didn't walk alongside him. That God climbed inside of Enoch and he walked. And everything that God said to him, he did. And guess what happened? He became so much like God, he went to God's habitation, which is nothing. Are you all listening? We all think God's in heaven, right? You know, he's in heaven. He's in this, he's in this place. The truth of the matter is he's all over the place. He told David, he said, you go to hell, I'll be there. All I'm trying to do is get us to think a little deeper, beloved, because I think John threw us in the deep end of the pool to begin with. How can you understand what he's saying if you can't understand who's the one that's making him right? Okay? Are we all right? Are we okay there? All right. I could go on. I could read some more verses, but I'm not going to do that. Let's, let's, let's see. What time is it? Oh, I, I got a few minutes. Verse 2. For the life was manifested... Do you think he just wanted it manifested in one physical being? Because if that's the case, then why did, why did Paul write until we all? Who's y'all? Paul was a little southern, you know. Y'all, you hear Tim every now and then? Y'all, that's because he lives in, in North Carolina too long. Anyway, it, it, and, and he said, until y'all come, and the word for come means to arrive. There's a place of arriving. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ. He did not say Jesus. Are you listening? The Christ always was. Jesus showed up when he came out of Mary's womb. But the Christ always was. The function of the Christ began to work on Jesus at baptism. That isn't when he got the Christ. That's Latter, that's Latter Day Saints teaching and a few others. No, that's when the ministry started. He always was the Christ. It took the Christ to impregnate Mary. Are you all listening? 
Be careful, ladies. You don't want an anointing like that. I shouldn't have said that. Let me, let me go back. For the life was manifested, and we saw it. And we bear witness and show unto you that eternal life. Now he calls the word of life is eternal life. In other words, it's not just something that's here for 30 years or 80 years or whatever you think you're supposed to see. A lady told me in the bank the other day, I'm getting old. I said, you ain't old enough yet? She said, why? I said, because you haven't read your Bible lately. She said, well, you're getting old. I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm about two-thirds of the way there. I said, he told us that he'd give us 120. Man, yeah, I, I looked at some of them, they show them 102, 103 years old. And, whew, jeepers, Lord, you're going to have to help me here. <laughs> eternal life, which was with the Father. When was eternal life there? It was there before time was. It's always been in the... The Father's going to give you life. He's just not going to give you 30 years or 40 years or 80 years or 50 years. He's going to give you eternal life. Okay? Which was with the Father, and it's been manifested unto us. What was the purpose of that manifestation? If Jesus wanted them to be like something different, Listen, I've seen a lot of them come and go, good ones. I've, I've listened to a lot of life preachers die. Nobody preached life any harder, any mortality, any harder than Edwin Sexton. I grew up under that ministry. And at 69 years old, he died. He rocked my boat. When Kelly Varner died, it rocked my boat big time. None of you have an idea. But God has given us eternal life. I'm not going to go in and go into all the stuff of teaching on life, but I want to tell you what. Eternal life means life exactly out of the heart of God. And it's up to us, just like Paul said to Timothy, lay hold of eternal life. What does that mean? Take hold of the Father. Seek the Father. Go after the Father. Because he is life. He's not going to give you something. He is life. It was manifested. So this is what John says. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and his son, Jesus, the Christ. Probably the original would say this. Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. Are you all listening to me? Because Christ is not his last name. Christ is his function. Actually, his first name is a function also. It's Yah saves. What was his job? To save. He saved us from, and through the Holy Ghost inside of us, he's saving us on to. What's he saving us on to? Eternal life. Till we're like him. Now we've got another question. Then what?
See, some people want to hear the message of eternal life because they're afraid to die. Some people want to hear the message of life, so we've escaped earth and all of its ways. Some people want to hear the word of eternal life because they don't have to struggle anymore. But when you lay hold of eternal life, and you become like him. What are you going to do then? You see what's happening? I'm making you think. It's not that I don't love you and I don't think you're okay, but I'm just telling you there's more to it. We, 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 we function on this shallow level all the time. We're at, the, we're at the kiddie's end of the pool. And he takes us around to the other end by the diving board. He said, get on the plank and take a walk. Are you all right? I love you. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get you to think deeper. Okay? Are you okay? Okay, I'm going to read the finishing verse. And these things write we unto you. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full or complete or perfect. Do you know what the church needs? A church full of joy. It's what you do. We get troubled by so many things. But what we need is the joy of the Lord because it becomes our strength. When you got the joy of the Lord, it's your strength. Doesn't matter how much pressure you're in, you can smile. I love you. I, I'm not going to go no further tonight. I, I just can't. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this up in two weeks when I come back from Michigan. And uh, I love you. I'm going to tell you what we do. Let's, let's all stand up. Let's get a hold of one another. And let's, let's pray for one another that, that God helps us dig deeper. Amen? Amen. Yeah, go cross, whatever. Come on. Oh, let's look at one another. It's better that way. Turn, two to two. Let's, let's, let's go. Come, I'll get you, boy. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I don't care how we do it.